Hey guys, my Huben is finally here. I went through a lot of trouble getting it. You might have already seen my unboxing video and this is my, let's say, first impression review of this air gun. Uh, I'm going to just start with the basic and then later go into details of operation and uh, how it performs. Uh, it's a bullpup semi-auto PCP air gun in 22 caliber. Uh, it has some very special features, especially regards to high power capabilities, built-in regulator, option of uh, setting power for each shot individually, external uh, uh, setting of the regulator, uh, high capacity magazine that is non-removable, it's actually in here and it's not possible to put it out. Um, the gun is very, very quiet, surprisingly, at, even at higher energy, if you are under subsonic uh, threshold, so if you're in subsonic area, then it's very quiet. Of course, after you get uh, uh, over that point, it gets loud because of the uh, sonic crack, but that's not possible to dampen down, so this is this is a very good feature of this gun, is the, this shroud that it's actually very efficient. Um, it's quite light actually, it has a synthetic stock. It's a very nice synthetic stock, I cannot say anything bad about it. Uh, I don't actually own a lot of synthetic uh, stock air guns because uh, I prefer wood and also if this gun would be available with uh, wood stock, I would get it, but unfortunately they are not available, at least not yet. It's a very, very nice grip. So far the nicest pistol grip I ever had. I have quite a big hands and the, the grip is fairly small, but it fits like a glove inside and it's very, very shoulderable. It's very easy to, easy to shoulder and the uh, cheek piece is very nice. I recommend uh, getting as uh, low mounts as possible just to get this uh, uh, very fast uh, uh, eye alignment with the scope. A couple of features that are very very different from other air guns, other PCP air guns is, uh, well for one it has a titanium cylinder uh, which is of course much uh, stronger than aluminium or steel so this means that you can fill it up to 350 50 bars. I personally probably am never going to fill it that far but I will fill it up to 300 because uh, usually the scuba tanks go to 300 bars and that's about as much as I can fill it to. Um, uh, the second feature is a built-in regulator that can be adjusted. Uh, it has a uh, Allen key here uh, so it, you can turn it up or down with Allen key and uh, you can observe your pressure over here on this manometer um, and if you lift up the pressure you can see instantly as the pressure rises on the meter but if you turn it down then you won't see what's happening because of course that air cannot escape so you have to fire a couple of dry shots to see to which point you set the regulator down to. So for tuning it down you have to fire a couple of dry shots uh, and uh, after it stops going down then you see what pressure you set it uh, on to. Um, but you really don't have to do a lot of this uh, adjustment because once you set up your preferred pressure, then you can dial your velocities just by this knob. Um, and uh, this knob reduces velocity or increases it, but of course you can only increase it up to capability of the regulated pressure. So if you set the pressure very low, you will have the maxi pow maximum power uh, low lower also, of course, accordingly. Um, now, the, this knob operates, side, uh, they say that this knob operates sort of like a transfer port choke. I think it works a little differently than because 
this is not a conventional design that would have a transfer port. I think it works on the uh, principle that it uh, shortens the period of time that the valve is open. So basically, if you open it up, then you have a higher energy, and then you have a longer uh, time that the valve is open. And if you dial it down, then it shortens that time. At, le at least it appears that way. As I said, I don't know in details how it works. So that uh, with that, I came to the next, let's say, probably the most uh, uncommon or the most special thing about the Huben is the way it operates. So the conventional design of the uh, common PCP rifles is that the valve is actually being pushed on by the pressure in the cylinder. That, in, that means that it's being shut, being closed by the pressure. And the more pressure you have, the harder the force on the valve is that it being closed. So it cannot open so easily. So that's, that's the, let's say, the big issue of the, uh, this common uh, system is that you have to have quite a big force, quite a big smack of the hammer in order to overcome this force on the valve to open it. Of course, this also has some good sides. Uh, the good side is that it's very safe because uh, unless you smack it very hard, it's actually closed. It will never open unintentionally. It might leak, but those leaks are not dangerous. They are very uh, unaggressive and slow. Uh, and also there's a, a good side to it that uh, if you have an unregulated air gun, you can actually set uh, quite a few shots in approximately the same velocity because if the pressure is higher, then it's harder to open and the valve won't open so much and uh, thus releasing less air. And when the pressure is lower, it opens up more and you have more airflow and you actually get the constant velocity despite the fact that the pressure in the air cylinder is changing. Uh, so the Huben actually works quite the opposite. So uh, the valve, it wants to open by the force of the pressure. So all the time we are actually holding the valve closed instead of the pressure holding the valve closed. So the valve wants to open the valve, uh, sorry, the pressure wants to open the valve in the Huben. So the good side about this is that you actually ha can have uh, faster opening times at higher pressures. So it's not pro no problem to get very high energies and high velocities. Uh, and uh, there's also a, a lot of other good sides is that you don't have to have a hammer to open it. So no stress, no vibration on the gun before the pellet exits the barrel. Uh, and uh, um, of course, the mass of the valve and all the assembly can be very light compared to the hammer and everything in a conventional system. Uh, and because of that, you can achieve extremely fast opening times. And this is very important because uh, in uh, classic PCP design, uh, the hammer has some weight and it doesn't open the valve instantaneously. It opens it like in a curve. It takes some time to open it and immediate at, immediately at the point when it's maximum or maximally opened, it started to close. And again, it takes some time. So you get the curve. You don't get like sharp edges opening of the valve and then open for a while and then sharp edge closing. Of course, you can never achieve totally sharp edges in this uh, uh, graph, let's, let's say, but you can get close to it. And Huben does get close to it, and because of that, it's very efficient. You can get uh, what I called uh, very high pressure efficiency. So you, you can have relatively low pressure and still, uh, still get quite high energies. Uh, also, because of this design, uh, the transport port and the whole uh, uh, surface area of the air passing through it is not limited. And because of that, you can again get very high uh, energies at low pressures. Um, and the bad side, okay, now let's go to the bad side of this system, where for one, it's quite hard to make the closing of this valve. So if you 
uh, imagine that the pressure is actually opening the valve. What closes it? Well, actually, I don't know for sure because, again, the Huben didn't actually reveal all of his secrets. Uh, but I'm sure that someone and eventually will take it apart. Uh, I for sure will do it eventually <laughs> and uh, find out exactly how it operates. Uh, okay, so that's the good and the bad side. So uh, with this bad side that I just mentioned comes the, another bad side in regards to safety. Of course, you have the manual safety on this gun, which is this lever. This is uh, uh, fire and this is safe. Um, there is no decocking option. It cannot be decocked. So you always have it cocked. Uh, and you also always have to treat it that way. If you have a pellet in the magazine, then it's always cocked and ready to fire. The only obstacle to it is this safety, which you can say it's reliable, but you know how it is. The best way is to not to have anything in the gun. And uh, with the classic PCP, you can decock it, and if, if it's decocked, it's safe. You, you cannot, nothing can happen. You can safely clean the barrel, for example, or etc., etc. Uh, with this option, you cannot have decocked because the pressure always wants to open the valve. So the trigger is the only thing, plus this manual safety, that it's keeping it from not firing. And uh, from this comes another, at least from my point of view, uh, thing that worries me. What if uh, this valve, uh, uh, something happens to it, that it breaks or something like that? You would get all the air gushing at one instance and probably would do quite a damage to the gun and also probably some damage to something that's surrounding this gun. And for example, I have all my guns in one place, so probably other guns would be damaged as well. Not to mention if this happens in your hands. Of course, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the worst case scenario, but nevertheless, with high pressures, you never know, and it's good to keep, uh, keep uh, the safety always in first place. But okay, once you guess this, get through this point that you know that this air gun is really always ready to fire, you know that it's best way to always keep the magazine empty, as it is for other guns as, as well, and also, also always, always have the safety on. Because the only thing that is uh, blocking you from firing is the safety, nothing else. The bad side of uh, this uh, system is that due to safety reasons and also uh, mechanical restrictions, the trigger pull is quite heavy. It's a little bit heavier than I would desire it to be, especially if you're trying to shoot accurately, which this gun, gun can shoot. So uh, this is one of the restrictions because you actually have to have a sear that is holding uh, the valve from trying, trying, trying to open at these extremely high forces. For example, the same reason why the, uh, very few um, uh, spring air gu uh, guns have uh, nice triggers. It is possible to adjust the built-in regulator to desired pressures. Uh, you can go uh, from about 110 bars up to 220. Uh, and uh, if you go under 110 bars, then uh, the gun won't operate properly anymore. And uh, you, you get uh, uh, the magazine won't rotate always. It might stuck. And sometimes it happens that there's like some gushing air blowing out of it after you already fired the shot. But that's you always have to uh, keep in mind that this is a special design and this is its uh, drawbacks that you have to have it set between 110 bars and uh, 220. But in that range, it never, never, so far I've fired a lot of shots, never ever uh, misfires. So always, always works properly. So this uh, semi-auto design really works. You have a lever back here with which you allow, if you put it up, the uh, rotation of this magazine and then you can fill the pellets in over here. You have a, like a fill port, something similar, not a fill port, but uh, 
port when you can load your pellets. Uh, something similar as, for example, um, uh, old-fashioned revolver like uh, called a single action army uh, and you just put the pellets inside two, uh, uh, two at once and then just rot rotate it for two slots and just put another two and etc etc and it holds 19 rounds which is plenty. Uh, when you set the pressure you will also notice that the higher if the pressure of the regulator the harder it is to move this lever up. So basically this lever is uh, uh, driven by the pressure and uh, rotating it's uh, the magazine it's also driven by the pressure and uh, if the pressure is too low as I said it won't rotate anymore and you will be able to rotate it despite the fact that this lever is down so I cannot rotate it now because you can see that the pressure is relatively high now it's about 210 bars um, and once I lift it up then I can rotate it freely uh, everything is built quite well Every mechanism, it works well. Um, there's really not a lot of bad things I can say about the design and the build. It's really high quality. Okay, so let's get to accuracy. Well, in that area, actually, I was not that pleased uh, because... Um, well, in my opinion, at least, they didn't choose the right barrel, barrel for, the, for it. Uh, it is a Lothar Walter barrel and it is a very good barrel, but it's still a standard air gun barrel. Uh, it still has a twist rate of uh, 1 in 17.7, I think, 450 millimeters, which is definitely not enough if you shoot longer, heavier bullets, pellets, like GSB Monsters or h and uh, Rabbit Magnum or Pile Drivers. Uh, I was really hoping to get good groups with this, uh, let's say, bullets, because of the potential of the energy of the airgun. And the airgun is really, really powerful. I mean, 100 joules with uh, GSB Monsters, 350 meters per second, uh, velocity and very very co consistent uh, shot from shot is always the same but you won't be able to make a good group for it because the pellets are extremely unstable and I'm talking about traveling uh, uh, shifting direction for a half a meter at 70 meters and uh, I will show you a video in a slow motion how actually this pellet is curving one way or another or spiraling or etc etc and that was not shot at a high velocity the velocity was only about 280 meters per second uh, so this is definitely not too high uh, uh, velocity for the pellet to be unstable because of the uh, uh, turbulence that occurs near Mach 1 and uh, I, I assume that this is mostly because of the not high enough twist rate. If you go to online twist rate uh, st stabilization calculator, you will find that if you put all the specs in of the uh, specs in of the pellet and the barrel, so the twist rate, you will find that most likely it won't be stable. And this really happens. So basically, if you put in a, a standard pellet like uh, uh, dome, any kind of dome pellet like JSB or Barracuda match or any of these pellets, they will they will fly stable as long as the velocity is not too high. But bigger bullets, if or even if it's not too high velocity, they won't be stable. And this is sim because of simple effect because air guns in general uh, don't rely only on uh, a gyroscopic effect uh, to stabilize the pellet. The pellet is shaped like an arrow. They are very heavy in the front, so the head is heavy and very light on the back. And not only light, they have a, this skirt that actually acts like uh, uh, an umbrella that actually creates a lot of drag. So be, because of their, their uh, uh, dimensions, their design, they, are, they will be stable and will fly true. 
not only for the gy gyroscopic effect. And uh, all the barrels for the air guns are actually usually under stabilized. The pellets are not well enough stabilized by the gyro effect. But this other feature, the pellet design uh, and the ge geometry uh, keeps them stable. And uh, if you are in a smaller velocity, so about 900 feet per second or 280 meters per, uh, sorry, uh, 280 meters per second, uh, in this safe range for this kind of stabilization, then you're fine. Then this barrel will work. But in order to shoot heavy projectiles that are uh, bullet shaped, not pellet shaped, you would need to have a higher twist rate. Unfortunately, this gun doesn't, and for that reason, it's really not possible to shoot, at least not with very uh, high velocity, anything accurately at longer distances, because the pellet or the bullet gets destabilized and you get bad groups. Um, I did shoot uh, one group that you will also see in uh, this video uh, with um, uh, HNN Barracuda Match. And the velocity was fairly high because this is a fairly high uh, weight uh, pellet. It was about 310 meters per second. And I did get very nice consistent groups at 70 meters. But you will also be able to see in the video that even uh, with pellets, some of them are still not stable at this range. So this is kind of a bummer for me because I bought this gun. I didn't buy this, buy this gun because you can uh, shoot uh, eight joules of energy. Of course you can. It's, it's nice that you can, but I, sh I bought it because you can shoot 100 joules. And for 100 joules, obviously, it's there's no point in shooting uh, lightweight uh, pellets at 100 joules. I mean, uh, they will be destabilized because they are too light for uh, these velocities. They are not heavy enough. Enough. So basically, what I would like to do is have a very heavy projectile, like the pie driver, and shoot it uh, at lower, relatively speaking, velocities. So approximately 300 meters per second and get uh, high energy, still get high energy. Uh, so this is kind of the biggest disappointment on the Huben so far, because it has a very, very big potential to shoot accurately also at high energies, just because of its me mechanism, because there is no hammer and there is no stress on the gun before the pellet exit or the bullet exits the barrel. barrel. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is the kind of thing that uh, I would like to change and hopefully this gun has an option to change the barrel because it would be great if it would be possible to change it to something with a twist rate, let's say uh, 1 in 16 or 1 in 14 or something like that. In that case, I'm pretty sure that it would be possible to shoot heavy cast bullets very, very accurately, and also with high energy. Um, yeah, of uh, uh, regards to barrel, as, as I said, it's Lothar Walter, at least that's what it's claimed. Uh, I think it's unchoked, although I cannot claim this for sure, because it's uh, I didn't remove the barrel yet to see uh, if it is in fact uh, unchoked. Um, but uh, there is also, at least in my opinion, another thing about Lothar Walter barrels that they are quite, uh, they ha the bore is quite uh, oversized. So you have to have a big bullet or a big pellet to be tight enough to make good groups. Uh, and uh, I did a couple of test shots with uh, the, the heavier bullets that I want wanted to use in this gun and uh, Notice that the pile driver, with, which has a diameter of uh, approximately 5.52 millimeters, it's actually very loose in the barrel. So basically, there are almost no uh, uh, grooves cut into the into the bullet once I shot it in the water to to be able to retrieve the bullet without being too damaged. Um, 
So this is kind of a, kind of a disappointing fact about it. But other than that, uh, I think it's a great design. Uh, it operates perfectly. The options for power are enormous, really enormous. You will be able to see that. Uh, because the gun is not very heavy, you also get a quite substantial recoil for this small caliber of an air gun. Uh, and uh, it's really, really fun to shoot. Uh, so that's it. Um, check out uh, the rest of this video for my results in uh, different velocities and uh, different ranges. Uh, and uh, as I said, this is a first glance review because I only had the gun for three days now and I definitely will uh, try to shoot it more. I I'm sure that I will be able to get even much, much tighter groups than I did in this video. Uh, I have to get used to the trigger, which is fairly stiff. All my other handguns are very, very, uh, have very, very light triggers. So uh, this is something I have to get used to. But other than that, it's really a special gun. Well, regarding shot count, um, I haven't actually feel it to a very high pressure yet, only about 240 bars because my scuba tanks, were, I only had this amount of air in my scuba tank. But uh, if you put, for example, uh, the regulator to about 130 bars approximately, you can still get extremely high energies, over uh, about 80 joules. You can get 80 joules from it. And uh, you get really a lot of shots. I didn't count them, but uh, if you look at the amount of air that is in the cylinder uh, and uh, the pressure and uh, overall you will see that it's very, very efficient because there is, of course, no hammer bounce because there's no hammer. So this is uh, this uh, waste is eliminated. And also the fact that it uh, can be set up how fast it closes the valve. You can really, really optimize uh, the air use in this air gun. So in overall, I would say the designers that did, did a very, very good job but that they put a little, not little, they didn't put any attention of the barrel. They just bought, a, let's say, a, the, the barrel that is assumed to be a world-class, first-class uh, manufacturer, Lothar Walter, which it is. I have nothing against Lothar Walter. They are exceptional barrels. But they didn't didn't take into account that they are actually making making a little different, a special air gun. This is not a conventional air gun. So they just put a brand in it and didn't do any research about anything else. That's my opinion, at least. So this is one thing that uh, could and should be changed. And with this, this again, air gun was, would be probably unbeatable in accuracy, consistency, shot count, energy to its caliber. Of course, you have to keep in mind that this is only 22. Uh, and uh, that's my overall opinion of first glance review. In the next review, I will probably, uh, not probably, uh, for sure have more information and more results. Thanks for watching guys and to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about air guns and especially about human. Thank you.